part. Hi gang. Today we're going to go over the five criteria that we use to define abnormal behavior. Sometimes it can be a challenge to determine whether or not someone's behavior and thinking patterns are normal or abnormal. And because it can be so confusing, the psychologists and psychiatrists here in the States and from around the world have come together and determined five criteria, five factors that a person has to have in order to be considered uh, having a diagnosable disorder. They can have one criteria present, they can have all five criteria present, but at least one needs to be legitimate for a person to have a diagnosable disorder. Now the first criteria, clinical significance, which is impairment. This person cannot do everyday activities. Uh, you can see here, a man cannot get out of bed. The woman over there on the right who has herself yelling at herself. She's not moving, she's not doing, she's not taking care of her family, she's not taking care of herself. Same thing with the young man down below who's holding on to his parents' leg. He's not going into school. He is not meeting his daily responsibilities. He is not functioning. That is clinical significance and impairment. Now, dysfunction in processes is about faulty thinking. The ideas that you have are illogical, irrational. They interfere with your ability to function. You can see the gentleman on the left. These are very common schizophrenic issues, like where are the voices coming from? The radio told me to do this. Um, seeing elephants, uh, that's a cognitive process uh, where you're hallucinating. Um, aliens are contacting me, people are following me. Maybe I'm Jesus, maybe I'm Napoleon. Those are irrational thoughts, those are interfering thoughts. And the M&Ms, if you notice the M&Ms are broken down by color and separated by color color. Uh, this is common in people who have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, where they have to separate everything by colors because if they let the colors mix, something bad is going to happen. Just like they can't leave the house without double checking things because if they don't double check, something bad is going to happen. It's a thought that really is irrational and interferes with healthy functioning. Distress Distress is about mental pain. In the psychological world, just like in the medical world, if someone is in pain, we want to help them get better. So even if the behavior doesn't meet the previous two criteria, they're not impaired, so they go to work and take care of their responsibilities. Their thinking is normal, reasonable, and rational. It's still possible to be doing a behavior that is painful. Um, the gentleman who's crying and the young person who is turning their head away from being bullied or yelled at, they might be doing the right thing. They might be taking care of their family, going to school, meeting all the responsibilities, but the pain of being bullied, that's a criteria that needs help. The pain of having to relocate your family to be safe and being upset about having to relocate. That's a pain that could need help. And then of course the lady there over on the right who has the smiling face to the world and then the sad face or the, um, it looks like a depressed face. In private, that's pain, mental pain. Deviant, deviant means against societal norms. Usually the easy way here to determine if someone is deviant is if their behavior breaks the law. Murder, <laughs> breaking the law, deviant. Uh, the gentleman who is flashing himself to other people, uh, there's laws for lewd and lascivious behavior. This one is the tricky one though, because sometimes what some people consider to be deviant isn't necessarily against all society norms. That's why there's the young man there who on one side of his face is his dry queen self and on the other side of his face is his everyday male face. The question is, if someone is a drag queen, is that truly deviant behavior that we need to fix? 
that we need to help with. This one, it can be tricky. Unless we're talking about something illegal, then not so tricky. Now the last criteria, and this is the criteria that can be very confusing. Dysfunction in relation to society. This means the way the person was raised, the behavioral norms that they were raised with are antithetical to a broader or general society. So this tends to refer to people who have been raised in isolated communities, isolated areas. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see first there's a group of women who are wearing uh, traditional dress for a specific fundamental LDS group, specifically with Warren Jeffs. You can see they're all dressed the same, their hair is all the same, their uh, eating habits, by the way, are all the same, what they are and aren't allowed to do are all the same. Uh, in the other picture, you can see they are no longer with the Warren Jeffs group. So they were able to change and adapt, but when they left, they thought riding bicycles was immoral. They thought consuming dairy products, immoral. Again, it's very specific to that group, but I presume the rest of America, we're okay with bicycles, we're okay with dairy products being consumed. The Japanese picture to the right, Harry Carey, uh, which is committing honorable suicide in order to preserve either your honorability or the, your family's honor. I know it's no longer practiced anymore, but that idea that some people are raised in order to preserve honor, in order to make sure no shame is brought to your family, you must kill yourself. Here in the United States, that's not so much the thinking. But it was very specific, very traditional in Japanese culture. And as an interesting side note, uh, since this is being recorded in New York, in New York, committing suicide is illegal. So again, it's the dysfunction in relation to society. Here in New York, suicide is illegal. Japanese culture, suicide is acceptable to preserve your family honor. So those are the five criteria to determining whether or not someone has a psychological disorder. So thank you. Bye.